water in dreams. Very, very common dream theme. People having all kinds of expressions of water in dream. Everything from ocean place and big waves to gentle running streams to rain coming out of the sky and on and on it goes. So water does relate in very particular ways to the moods that we have, you know, are we feeling um, watery, sad, and is there a sense of those kinds of tears coming down? And two, are we feeling nostalgic, that kind of sense of longing that comes with water? And of course, origination, so much of our sense of water is the notion that things come from water, are birthed from water, the necessity of water in our lives, like breathing, the necessity to be hydrated, to drink water. In fact, the dreams can often pick that up. Are we spending too much time in a watery mood? Or do we have a sense of feeling somewhat dry and needing more watery experience in our life, more fluidity, more spontaneity, spontaneity in our lives? So water comes as an image. It denotes different moods, emotions, states of being. How dreams will forever use metaphor and pun and riddle and image language to suggest states of being, internal and external. External meaning, look, you know, uh, we need water to survive. Are we getting enough? Do we need to actually just very concretely be drinking more water and so the war being flooded with water in dreams? I mean, very direct that way. And to, in a subtle way, you know, uh, is there a need for a depth of experience, sadness, tears, crying. Is there something that we're needing to grieve that we have not? And water then comes forward in dreams to remind, to suggest, to support our internal processes. Now, dream tending goes a step further, right? Um, dream tending suggests that there is something more. And to begin with, in the times of the pandemic, you know, and people feeling threatened and people feeling anxiety and the sense of feeling isolated. You can imagine that when a tidal wave of water comes into a dream, which is one of the more common themes I'm hearing again and again over these last number of months, for sure. Uh, what is threatening? You know, what is, what is the danger? How are we experiencing the concern of being, you know, washed over? Um, and sometimes there's a really destructive quality and element to that. How do we come to terms with that body of water being too much for us? And so then we talk about protection and support in developing an additional relationship to water. Dreams come, remember, often as warning, uh, often giving us a heads up before the actuality of the avalanche or the flood or the tsunami that's coming forward you know, really to bring attention to what we need to do to prepare to experience. Okay. And two, there's that generative quality to water, as I suggested, you know. What would it be like, rather than to be frightened of water, to have the support and the protection to swim in water, to explore the depths of possibility that water offers us? You know, and from an archetypal or an imaginal dimension, thinking about water, we think of water as metaphor. Stories have picked that up forever, right? The deep sea or the dark night of the soul and that journey through the tides and the winds as we're moving through water to destination, on journey, Ithaca, always trying to get home, Homer making the classic journey over to that island place, you know, the, the hallmark of mythology and so many other discussions. Moby Dick, the whole setting takes place in the context of the watery areas. Now, there is even more, actually, when we think about water, and this is different, what I'm about to share. It's a part of what dream tending subscribes to. And let me use an example. Let me share with you this notion of ocean. I live in Santa Barbara, so Santa Barbara is an, in California, an ocean place. So we have many connections to the ocean, the ocean out here, right? On one dimension, water comes, the ocean is here, and we think about, you know, all the time we spend 
at the water and I can be dreaming situationally. What's the last 48 hours? Have I been to the sea? Have I been to the beach? Am I intending to go to the beach? Is there a desire that's percolating? Am I concerned that I'm too much in the beach culture? You know, this water, beach, concrete, here now, living by a body of water. It could be a lake, place, a stream, a river, and so on. So very concretely, water in dreams representing where I am in my life situation and what to be interested in or cautious around, right? Water too here in Santa Barbara is relevant because as a beach community, so much orients around water. You know, people come here from around the world to visit these oceans, these beaches. So water has a lot to do with our identity and water can have a lot to do with my identity. You know, my sense of being a ocean person, a coastal person. And the same would be true, a lake person, and so on and so forth. Even in a cityscape, where you wouldn't think of bodies of water, there are many bodies of water, right? Small little lakes in parks, right? The whole notion of walking about and feeling the glory when rain comes into a city place, or for that matter, any place, right? The generative quality of when rain comes, something else blossoms or roots, or thrives, right? Water in dream. So water, in addition to our emotional state of being, comments on our physical proximity and where we're located and how we are connected to different uh, aspects of water. And more, right? I shared that in Santa Barbara, ocean is so important, so we develop a sensitivity. We develop um, empathy towards that ocean. And when things happen, you know, like, for example, there's an oil spill, which has happened here a number of times in Santa Barbara, you know, it's bad things. The sea, leaf, sea life have a hard time. They perish. The kelp has a very hard time, and it also begins to die off. And we feel the water in the ocean beginning to get toxic. In fact, there's signs posted that are saying, stay out of the water. After rains, signs are posted in Santa Barbara stay off of the water because of the toxicity. But that water, right, is being poisoned. And just imagine, if you will, take this leap with me, imagine a leap. If water is feeling poisoned, can you imagine that that water has a voice? It has a plea? It's in pain in some form, right? That ecosystem is hurting now? And if that's the case, if you go into that space, then you can imagine that that ocean is dreaming as well. Perhaps it's different than me dreaming about the ocean. Perhaps the ocean in its particular way is sending out a warning, saying, hey, pay attention, suffering now, as would be a forest or a mountain place or a cityscape, suffering now, in need of attention, and therefore, that ocean as image appears in the dream a people, in the dream that comes to me at night, ocean now in dream, offering its plea on its behalf and appearing as images in the dreams that I'm having. So water, ocean, you know, has so much to offer us from the very personal, physical, situational, to the state of an emotional quality of being, there's so much to unravel in water. Let me leave you with this, with water in dreams. There is this form called alchemy, and it suggested that when water comes, things dissolve, that water dissolves things into psychic reality, into soul. Water dissolves all things to soul. So water has that capacity. Water, when it comes to dream, may signal, signal transition, may signal something new that's emerging may signal that a mood is coming through, and to bring attention to that, may signal that those tears of water, that quality of grief and sadness, may be necessary now as something that's transforming into something generative and engaging, the next evolution. So when water comes, I pay attention. You know, it is the life force expressing itself through image that's visiting in dream. Okay, I look forward to being with you in community where we can open this theme up 
even more so. And there's so much to talk about in relation to water and dream. And you may be interested in knowing who I am. I'm Dr. Steven Eisenstadt, and over these past 40 years, I have helped thousands of people worldwide, helping them to understand the meanings of the dreams and how to gain insight by listening more carefully to the dream and to the images and figures in the dream. People come to me because they are asking to decrease a sense of anxiety, particularly in these times of uncertainty, that sense of despair or isolation. And two, they come because they're interested in supporting well-being and supporting their sense of creativity to reignite that creative spark that moves through all of us. If these two ideas or any of these ideas are of interest to you, there are two ways that you can join us. First is you can come and get involved with our dream tending community. We would love to see you there. There in the community, you'll be able to work with people that I've trained for over 20 years now, very gifted, people that can help you go inside of dream and unfold what's possible there for you. And second, every other Thursday or so, I offer a Facebook Live webinar. You access that through Zoom or through Facebook. And in those webinars, I offer um, the possibility of what dream really can mean for each of us. I work with individuals. You'll see me work live on camera. And too, I discuss what I do and how I did it. I hope to see you soon. I think you'll discover a great deal of value for you personally in deepening your way of being with dream and with a variety of dream themes that come forward in each of our lives. Look forward to seeing you soon.